Hello, uh, welcome to another devlog. Um, it's only been about a week since the last one and I haven't had a terribly productive week. Uh, I've been a bit poorly and so lost, uh, well, haven't done as much as I would have liked to do. But it's my intention to hopefully make these videos a bit more uh, concise but more frequent. Um, so I thought I'd show you. Um, a few bits and pieces that I have done. So, um, this should all be familiar if you uh, watched last uh, the last devlog. Uh, nothing much is different here except I've started to put light fixtures into rooms, and. Um, yeah, I've only done a couple of rooms yet. I'm experimenting a bit with how I want them to work. There are light switches which let you turn them off and on. Um, and if I show a slightly more advanced one, so uh, off and on. And then there's another switch which controls the same light. And I've improved a bit on reality that uh, if this one is on, and then I turn that one, then it also changes the switch, which is something which has always bugged me about lights with more than one switch. Um, so that's, that. this is a little bit, I mean, it's just a switch, right? Um, but that's that. I'm not totally convinced about that as a light bulb off effect. And, um, I might make them transparent with a visible filament. I haven't decided. I want to keep transparency to a minimum because I think it interferes a bit with the aesthetic uh, of the game. But I've done some that window is a transparent thing. I'll show you windows a bit more in a bit. Uh, and I don't know. I don't know uh, what will be better there. We'll see. I'm not a hundred percent happy with my shadow. So if you, oh yes, I added crouching at some point. So the shadows are disconnected from the the bottom of the geometry, particularly on small objects like that. And it's my understanding that this is a um, This is controlled by the bias of the light and it's a balance between making sure the, the shadows look correct and then making sure that an object doesn't cast shadows on itself. And um, I've, I, I can't find the correct settings. I have a feeling that maybe Unity is um, has uh, like a hidden variable in there somewhere. I don't know. I need to do some more investigation to see if I can get the shadows looking better um but what else oh yes there's one more light in here which is the same the same kind of thing the way i've made it though you can have multiple lights with one switch like in the living room there are two lights controlled by one switch and you can have multiple switches per light and well it took me a little bit uh, of time to figure out how to do that but it's done. Um, there's a cut. There's like a bunch of little things in the flats, like incremental changes I've been making. Uh, this is not new, but it, it didn't fit in the room before, so the, there's a new version which does fit. This filing cabinet, which opens, and I like the way that it opens. It's new. Bits and pieces. There's a sink in here for washing your knees and without a tap. There's a few little products in the bathroom. And I'm experimenting with this. So these are the tiles in the bathroom. I'm not certain if this is correct. Like the, the grout lines might be too narrow. In general, I'm trying to keep um, very small details to a minimum in the game. I don't want everything to be too cluttered. And I'll talk a bit about that with something else. And so maybe these lines are too thin and I should make all of the tiles a bit bigger. That, that 
that's a question. That's the reason why I've only done one wall here. It's uh, sort of a test to see what I think. A lot of these things, um, these questionable things, I stick them in and uh, leave them there while I do other stuff. And every time I test the game, I come in and I think, hmm. And eventually I'll, I'll make a decision about what I think about it. Um, I don't know. Um, I think, oh yeah, but, oh, this is another problem though that I realised I had is that prompt, which you can't really see because my face is in the way, um, it says click left mouse button to open door, is coming from the wardrobe here and it goes through the wall and the reason for that is that uh, I keep all of the objects that can be interacted with on their own layer so that the the player object which is um, testing to see if there's anything that can be interacted with uh, all the time um, I don't want it to have to test against all of the objects it's only most of the objects are invisible to that but this thing is uh, but as a result, it's not blocked by walls. So I either have to... I've thought of a couple of solutions to this. One would be just to include walls in this list, but have them do nothing when they get uh, hit. That would work. Alternatively, I was thinking that there could be a... I could keep track quite easily of what room you're in and only things which are interactable in that room are valid targets um, are activated activatable while you're in the correct room i don't know if that could cause problems like i feel like it it's possible that one object could be blocking another and not but i don't think so i think that that might work maybe Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really want to manually go around and set all of the walls to be interactable, but not. And then I'd have to modify my code to make sure that they... Anyway, I'm thinking aloud. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to solve this problem, but I'm sure there's a, there's a simple solution. There's nothing really else going on up here, although I am in a bit of a quandary as to how to open the kitchen door cupboards we'll see in the hall i have redone the stairs from last time i think uh, mm, i don't remember if they were like this or not i think i've redone them since last time um so i think they look nicer i've also put all the banisters in although there's a mistake right here because i haven't uh, i haven't I was fiddling with I was fiddling with the mesh to see if the mesh might be the cause of some of the shadow problems, and it's not. But I haven't unfiddled with the mesh. I will put that on my list of things to do. And then I accidentally triggered a thing here. Uh, I've been sticking in new ways of uh, showing text and things. I think I've now got down the precise ways that. Uh, or or I, I've coded and I've decided all of the different ways that text appear in the game. That is, some objects you look at and text appear. Uh, some text is triggered by uh, passing through a space, like this one. You go down the stairs and the text starts typing. And then other text, uh, the more complicated story text you click on, you interact, like on the TV. And I think that's it. I think those are the three types of text. Here's another example of text that just appears um, again this image I think uh, a bit like the bathroom is a little too noisy like well I think of two possibilities one I think is maybe I can fiddle with the mip maps and make it so that when you're this distance away it's just a plain color and only when you get close does it fade in I remember a game, I don't remember what it was, but one of the old classics like Doom or something, not Doom, Quake maybe, something 3D and old, had a system where 
when you got really super close, it like faded in and more detailed. No, what game was that? I don't know. Faded in a more detailed texture. Uh, maybe I'm just totally inventing that because it wasn't doing, it wasn't quite, oh, I don't know. Anyway, so I wonder if I could do something like that where up from here it's just pink and then as you get closer it fades in. I'll, I'll have to experiment with that, I guess. Um, or maybe just draw more simple pictures for these kind of things. Um, I don't know. It's a, it's another little quandary. Um, so yeah, uh, about this text, like uh, the, uh, I'm, I'm in the process of thinking about how much text goes in. I've written quite a lot and maybe too much. Well, no, I haven't written too much, but I've maybe sort of thinking about having a density of text which is too high um, because I don't want it to be overwhelming I don't want it to be that everything that you you do or every time you move every time you look at something text is exploding everywhere that'll make it too noisy and too busy uh, what I want is to have enough for it to be interesting and to tell the story um, but not to not to be cluttered and annoying and so I'm not certain about what the correct density of text is so for example right here assuming that you've looked at the picture you'll get a bit of text here and you come down the stairs and that triggers and you get some text over there I was thinking about having some text on this wall but I think that might be past the limit like there's a sort of a spatial relationship between all the bits of text that I shouldn't shouldn't put them too tightly together uh, similarly like in something like this this cupboard none of these are interactable yet but it's my intention that at least some of the products and shelves and things you can you can pick up and examine and the question is how many of them like should these all be pick upable? And if so, do I write something about all of them? Which is doable, but I don't know if I can write something interesting about all of them. And um, and why? What, what's the point? Maybe there should be one or two things per, per shelf. I think that probably makes a lot more sense. Similarly, in, in terms of cupboards, my intention is that some things will be openable and you'll be able to look inside, but not everything. And there's, a, there's an interesting balance to be drawn there of where is the, um, where is the, the limit. I, I've been thinking about this specifically with this room because this is the room that um, could, for narrative reasons, have a lot of things going on in it. At the moment I've got two. I've got this under the bed which is not complete and I've got this which opens but doesn't tell you anything. It will tell you something. I haven't put the text in yet. And then I'm going to write something about the dresses. This is an odd bit of furniture which I haven't built yet which I want to write something about. How many of these drawers are openable? At least one of them is going to be and maybe more than that. Uh, there is going to be, there are going to be things on the shelf that you can blow. So, is there like a, is there like a limit? I have to check what that is because it might be important. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. That like density of interaction, density of text, density of detail is what I'm thinking a lot about. At the moment and I don't know what the what the solutions are with all that in mind this flat downstairs which I've started work on is way too visually cluttered at the moment I think um, so this is the the next door neighbor the old lady who lives downstairs and I'm not going you're not going to be able to explore the whole flat uh, it's going to be one room the living room um, and this is the 
the shape of it. So there's going to be a bunch of stuff in here, but how much? And the wallpaper I like. I want to make a contrast with the flat upstairs and I want it to be an old lady flat, which it sounds like a horrible thing to say. I don't know. You know what I mean? Um, but this is too much, I guess. I don't know. Similarly, like, uh, she has boxes over her radiators and, um, I feel like this might be another example of too dense, too dense details. Um, oh yeah, transparency on windows I was going to mention. So these, uh, the glass is very subtly putting a tint on things. You can, you can see that the, the white of this outside is a little darker, a little greyer through the window than, than through the gap. Um, So yeah, uh, I, I don't know, the, the, the kind of the density and things is really what's on my mind. And as I continue to build out the world piece by piece, um, I think I'm, I'm finding a tendency to get too small and detail-y and spindly. Like, does this, does this table, re oh, yeah, that's a mistake. Does this um, table really need tiny little legs? Shouldn't it be a bit fatter to fit in with all of the other chunky objects? Um, probably. Probably does. Um, and so that's what I'm doing at the moment. Uh, I'm repeating myself a lot, so it's time to stop. Um, thanks for watching and um, see you next time. Toodaloo.